In this video, we're going to look at the definition of isotopes and how those different isotopes have different atomic masses. After watching this video, you should be able to define isotope, explain the concept of average atomic mass, and state why neutrons do not affect identity or chemical properties of an element. The first thing we need to do is define what an isotope is. Isotopes are atoms of the same element because they have the same atomic number and therefore the same number of protons, but they have different atomic masses. Now we need to think about what goes into that atomic mass number. If the number of protons is the same, what's the only other thing that can be different? Remember that the atomic mass includes both protons and neutrons. So if the number of protons is the same, the only thing that account, can account for this different is the number of neutrons. Okay. So isotopes will have the same atomic number but a different atomic mass. Because they have the same atomic number, they are the same element. Just a quick review here of isotopic notation. Note that we have our symbol here, x, and that represents any element, whatever it may be. The number a is our mass number, which includes both the number of protons and the number of neutrons, so the total of those two values. And then we have the atomic number z, which is the number of protons, and it's that number that determines the identity of the element. Let's look at an example of the isotopes of hydrogen. So here we have pictures of hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3. Now notice we have two different names for these, and we'll talk a little bit more about the naming in a minute. What we're worried about now is the number of each type of subatomic particle present in that particular isotope. Now hydrogen 1, which is the most common isotope of hydrogen, has one proton and no neutrons. Notice that it also has one electron because we know it's a neutral atom, and so what we see is that the number of protons must equal the number of electrons. And as we go to hydrogen 2, and hydrogen 3, we see that continues to be the same. The number of protons doesn't change because it's still hydrogen. The number of electrons doesn't change because we still have neutral atoms. Isotopes and ions are two different things. So when we go to hydrogen 2, we see that we now have one proton and one neutron, and those are both going to be found in our nucleus of our atom. And then hydrogen 3, we have one proton and two neutrons. So all of these are are atoms of hydrogen, and these are all the types of naturally occurring isotopes that we see for hydrogen. So if I were to take a sample of hydrogen, what I would find is that the vast majority of them are hydrogen 1 atoms, but some of them are actually going to be hydrogen 2, and an even smaller number will be hydrogen 3. And the amount that each isotope is present in each element varies from element to element. Now when we looked at hydrogen, they had these kind of special names for the different isotopes. We had hydrogen, we had deuterium, and we had tritium. Most isotopes do not have special name for the different isotopes of that particular element. And so what we do is we actually name these by just saying the name of the element, a dash, and then 12. And this 12 is our mass number because we know if it's carbon then the number of protons or the atomic number must be 6. So to distinguish between these two isotopes we call one carbon 12 and the other carbon 13. The protons have to be the same it's only the neutrons that are different and because these are both neutral isotopes we also have six electrons in each of these. We're talking about neutral atoms so the number of protons must equal the number of neutrons. We also notice that if we look at carbon on the periodic table, what we see down here at the bottom is the average atomic mass. Now, we sit there and look and we see 12.01. We have to realize this is a weighted average. Most of the isotopes of carbon found in nature are in fact carbon 12. And when we look at the average atomic mass, we see that it's 12.01, so really close to 12. But what we also know is that there's a small percentage that are carbon 13. There's also a small percentage that are carbon 14. If you've ever heard about carbon 14 dating, that's where it comes from. And what we see is that there's enough of those carbon 13 and carbon 14 
isotopes to raise the average atomic mass of carbon to 12.01, but the overwhelming majority of those isotopes are going to be of carbon 12. Now, when we look at different elements, we'll see different numbers here. Rarely do we see one that is an, a whole number. It's typically got some fraction. So make sure that you look at that and determine both the most common isotope, but realize that there are other isotopes of that element present in nature. Well, when we look at isotopes of atoms, what we see is that if I'm looking at carbon-12 or carbon-13 or carbon-14, their chemical properties are really essentially the same. Now, they'll have different nuclear properties because they have a different number of neutrons in the nucleus, but most of what we're going to be looking at are chemical properties. And what we see is that chemical properties are attributed primarily to protons and electrons. And because these two things don't change as I go from say carbon 12, carbon 13 to carbon 14, it's not going to substantially change the chemical properties of an element. And so when we vary the number of neutrons, it doesn't really change the types of reactions that that element can undergo, that atom will undergo, whether it's by itself or in a molecule. And so as a result, they really don't change anything about the element other than its atomic mass.